A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good evening and welcome to our service on Maundy Thursday, the first service of the Easter Tridium, which continues tomorrow with the Good Friday Liturgy tomorrow afternoon and Saturday evening with the Easter Vigil. Uh, it's good to be with you wherever you are joining me as we start to draw to the close of Holy Week. <clears throat> so let us start with our first hymn, From Heaven You Came.
Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to reclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and for ever. Amen. A reading from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself. That the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks to God broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death until the Lord comes. It follows that anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will be guilty of desecrating the body and blood of our Lord. A man must test himself before eating his share of the bread and drinking from the cup. For he who eats and drinks and ju judgment on himself, if he does not discern the body, this is the word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St John. It was before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that his hour had come and he must leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved his own who were in the world and now he was to show the extent of his love. The devil had already put it to the mind of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Jesus, well aware that the Father had entrusted everything to him, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the table, laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, tied it round him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel. When it was Simon Peter's turn, Peter said to him, You, Lord, washing my feet? Jesus replied, You do not understand now what I am doing, but one day you will. Peter said, I will never let you wash my feet. If I do not wash you, Jesus replied, you are not in fellowship with me. Then Lord said, Simon Peter, not my feet only, wash my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, a man who has bathed needs no further washing. He is altogether clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. He added the words, not every one of you, because he knew who was going to betray him. After washing their feet and taking his garments again, he sat down. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked. You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Then if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I have set you an example. You are to do as I have done for you. This is the Gospel of Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight in this liturgy, we celebrate the institution of the very sacrament we are celebrating, the Eucharist. And I appreciate that for all of you it's a spiritual sacrament. We commemorate the night when Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. On this holy night we reenact the... We hear the story of the washing of the feet in the Gospel of John. Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, the Lord of all, gets down on his knees and in an act of love bathes the feet of his disciples. It was a most extraordinary event, that washing of feet, but no more extraordinary than the fact that Jesus came down from heaven in human form and allowed him to be himself to be sacrificed for our sakes, for our salvation. At the Last Supper, Jesus kneeled down no lower than he did when he entered the world as a tiny babe on the first Christmas day. Jesus performed no act of greater love and service than when he allowed himself to be taken by the rough men and died for us on the cross. Bathing the feet of his disciples was an act of reversal. Really, it should have been the disciples who bathed the feet of Jesus, not him their feet. But entirely reversing the order of things is precisely what Jesus is about. Coming down from heaven, climbing the hill of Calvary, these are even more unexpected and extraordinary events. Tonight, We hear that Jesus didn't drag people from the highways and byways to wash their feet. He washed the feet of his companions, his disciples, his twelve apostles. He did so to stress that very special bond between them and to show them in a very concrete way how he wanted them to live. If it was not beneath his dignity to wash their feet, then it could hardly be beneath the dignity of the apostles to do the same for others. This ministry of service to one another, symbolised in the bathing of feet, is at the very heart of Christian life. To be a Christian is to prepare to kneel down and perform the lowliest of tasks for one another. It is to be a servant for the sake of Jesus. I once heard the story of a, a young nun working in a leper colony in, 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 in very hot temperatures in Africa. There was a journalist visiting 
and stood there amazed watching the young nun bathing the wounds of the victims of leprosy. And the journalist said, I wouldn't do that for £10,000. The nun looked at the journalist and replied, neither would I. I do it for love. We do not serve our brothers and sisters simply because we are told to do so by Jesus. We don't do it because it might help us get to heaven. We do it for love. We do it in response to the love shown to us by our divine Saviour. Tonight we focus our attention on the Eucharist, on this great sacrament of love. That is precisely what it is, a, a mass, a sacrament of love. A sacrament that cannot be contained by walls. Just as love between two people overflows into love for their children, their wider family and their friends. We celebrate the Eucharist frequently because of Jesus' command, do this in memory of me. He only used those words once, but he said them in a very special context during the solemn meal, the night before he died. His words, do this in memory of me, encapsulate a very great deal. They mean celebrate the holy meal. They mean wash one another's feet. They mean love one another. They mean give your lives in the pursuit of truth. They mean be prepared to follow Jesus on the way of the cross. They mean so very many things and yet mean only one thing. To live the same kind of life that Jesus lived. That is our whole aim and purpose for our lives. We who have professed the Christian faith. Let us therefore live our lives in memory of him. Let us make every act, every thought, every word, every breath in memory of him. And worthy of him, the one true and saviour of us all. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, as we say together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, on this night, the night that he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church for greater understanding between the denominations, for a sense of working together. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through the disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church and for our church communities, for those who are searching to know more about Jesus, his life, death and resurrection, for those seeking to commit their lives to Jesus, for all ministries lay and out ordained. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night he commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those who are sick, as we pray for them. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded them if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We ask for a greater understanding of difference, a greater sense of one humankind. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death 
and look forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. And in a moment of silence, we bring those that we know who have died before you, Lord. Comfort those who mourn. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now we sing a new commandment. the Eucharist we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our ancestors but we know we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that he was with them in the upper room so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes let us celebrate this feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end, and on the night before he suffered, sitting at a table with his disciples. He instituted these holy mysteries that we, redeemed by his death and restored to life by his resurrection, may be partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took bread, he thanked you, broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, all of you drink from this cup because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts, that with everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us all to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we thank you that in this one a wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of his body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of his redemption, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs> 